How do you survive photo shooting models? Here we go. Step number one is to find someone that you know that actually acts as a model. Models oftentimes when not professional tends to work more conveniently to the people, to the photographer that they know. And moving on to step number two is to always show up on time. Now this is a bit of a no-brainer, however, showing up on time puts trust to your models that you are number one competent, number two responsible. However, do not expect the same for the model. When they say two o'clock meet up, it means 4 o'clock get ready, right? So most of the models end up showing at 2.30, 3 o'clock, some even showed up at 4 o'clock and they were not fully dressed and they were not fully made up. Now, guys, if you're watching this, girls have layers and layers of makeup. The first layer is just the foundation level. The foundation level is basically just to get their skin tone a bit brighter, looking less blemish. And the second layer is down to the lipstick, all the way to the eyeliners, to the mascara and any other further accessories. Thus, with this in mind, I can tell you an average of girls will actually take up to 1-2 to two hours just dressing up on their face. They will take an additional 30 minutes just to find the dress that they like and to find additional accessories to boost the certain something and make sure it's not lopsided, <laughs> okay? So these are the things that I heard when I was you know, sitting around reading my book. Moving on to tip number 3 is to bring a book. So now that you showed up on time, you're gonna have to waste 2 hours listening to them, putting on shades of makeup, putting on different colors of lipstick, putting on glitter or no glitter, and also measuring the size of your cups, okay? So, read a book. Business books are highly engaging, keeps you super focused into your work, thus omitting all the noises coming out from the girl as they scream and moan of their makeup being very horrendous. <laughs> I forgot I got two eyes. <laughs> wow. No, it's not okay. <laughs> or of the size of the cups not being one size larger or one size lower compared to other girls. And moving on, and moving on to step number four, once you're done reading your book, you're gonna have to set up lighting. Lighting is the most important part and please do not expect your customer to bring their own lighting. Lighting is so important towards any fashion shoot or any you know, model photography. If you have a flashlight, that would be great. If you don't, you can actually use a softbox lighting just like me on like this one. And step number five is to ask your client on what kind of photos or what kind of styles of color edits that your customer actually wants. For this case, our customer wants to shoot at a very high temperature, making the image look a bit more brown. Thus, I actually engaged on my DSLR to be shooting at 9,000, even in some cases, 10,000 Kelvins just to mimic that kind of filter or that kind of effect. And step number six is to be super patient with them. Now, on my shoot of five different models, not all of them know how to pose. So ideally, as a photographer, you need to know the kind of image that you need to show so that the clients will be happy in the end of the day. So remember your basics, one third framing, frontal framing, play around with focal lengths, 16 mil, 25 mil, 50 mil, 85 mil. Uh, if you have 200 mil, in fact, that would really help. And try to create depth into your image and playing artistic styles, such as this photo where I shot in between two metal framing. And this is the shot that the customer in the end chose for her portfolio. In fact, this customer loved this picture so much that it actually went up to her website the next day. And that is if you're shooting on a tight lens, you can actually create amazing depth of field. Now, if you're shooting on a wide angle lens, you won't get that much depth of field. However, you get a really nice image, making the girl look really tall by shooting at a really low angle, just like this. Now, Girls love it when you actually compliment them. So when you're taking photos of them, remember to compliment them all the time. If not, their smiles are going to turn to frowns and their frowns are going to turn to lesser money into your pockets, unfortunately. I'm just saying, please don't be offended. <laughs> so in between shots, when you're taking photos, always be sure to impress your clients by saying, hey girl, you look really pretty. Can I get you, you know, moving your chest up a little bit more? Now this is a bit of a bad habit from people that I've noticed. They tend to become a little bit more comfortable. They tend to become a little bit more relaxed. However, in photo shoots, we actually crave for the opposite, where we crave for the highest attention from you looking confident. So to look confident, in fact, is to have your shoulders out. You know, your shoulders gonna be really straight down towards the camera at 45 degree angle, just like this. Not only it shows confidence into your product, but it shows confidence into yourself as a model. So always make sure to make your customers or make your clients look very professional. Or not, you're gonna end up with really crappy images saying the customer will be like, oh man, this photographer really sucks, doesn't know what he's doing. So always make sure to have your model poses correct. 
and the way you think that they will love it. And the next point is to shoot a lot of varieties. So back to the topic of shooting a 16mm. The 16mm is a magical kind of lens. Not only does it make the woman look thinner, it also makes the woman look taller. And this is exactly the features that women actually crave for and they actually want. Distortion isn't always a bad thing. Distortion is a great thing if you're trying to make an illusion that the girl is taller than she really is or to make her face look slimmer than she actually is. So when you're shooting at a wide angle lens, I would highly recommend you shooting down below just like this shot. Or if you want to shoot in straight to the front, you can have your model posing with her hands out just like in the framing just so to make a very nice artistic style towards her. Remember, if I've taken a picture just without her hands being as an accessory, you will notice that all the pressure gone into her head will make her self-doubt that she has really nice inner beauty. So as a photographer, what you can do to alleviate the pressure from viewers 100% focusing onto her face is to number one, add accessories. Accessories can be phones, it can be a laptop, it could be a handbag. It can be anything that the customer interacts with. It can be a water bottle that she's drinking. It helps to alleviate the pressure from the viewers away from the model. And I don't really recall how many tips we are in already, but to always make sure that you know your artistic styles. Artistic styles are highly recommended on fashion shoots. Always be very stringent on your locations. Posing the models could be the king, and the location of the shoot will be the queen. Now, if we were to put it into an analogy, shooting the models, posing the models would be king, Shooting at a very nice location will be queen. Marry these two together and you get a really nice looking demo reel or a really happy customer. All right, and that pretty much wraps up on how do you shoot a professional paid gig on fashion model photo shooting. So if you have any other further questions or any other suggestions, you can actually leave down in the comment down in the section below. If you do want to further support this channel, please just help me by liking or subscribing to my YouTube channel. Or in fact, just give me a follow on Instagram or tag a friend in which could actually get inspiration from the way I shoot models today. So thank you so much for tuning in and as always, enjoy your Christmas and I'll see you next year. Bye-bye.